plagiarism is a significant and serious issue. And so you have to be, I was naive to that in the beginning. I wasn't all that careful about, I wasn't thinking, I don't know, I thought that students had a higher ethical code than, than perhaps they do. Or maybe the computer age has made people think it's so easy to cheat that they just do more frequently. But I have found cheating, it's not absent in all classes, but I would say I have found it more frequently in online classes. And so you have to be very kind of savvy. Well, it's, no, that's not right. You have to be on top of it. You don't have to be that savvy because most people who cheat are not all that intelligent. <laughs> and they don't really know how to really fool you if you are watching for it. They think you don't know about you know, tools that you can use to detect it. But I would say that you do have to be kind of, well, I mean, you have to decide. If you don't care and you just want to let it go and you say, oh, well, that's their problem then that's an okay way to handle it. That isn't the way that I like to handle it because I'm kind of a zero tolerance person. When I first uh, did, I would say cheating, you know, not being able to uh, uh, you know, be assured that the person on the other side is doing the work. Uh, but you know, that is not the way it is anymore with me because of the fact that uh, um, I haven't seen it yet. You know, even like the quizzes, when I give quizzes to the students, uh, the averages are the same as it was when I was doing the quizzes in the classroom. Uh, so I haven't really, you know, the, all those fears have been really dispelled, I will say. Uh, you know, after a while you get to learn a person's reading, uh, I mean writing abilities, I should say, so when you're reading it you can tell it's been written by them. You can learn how to do that after a while. Oh, well, you can't do academic integrity. Well, and my answer to them is, well, okay, you can't do academic integrity. Sure you can. You can't do it in your live class. How do you know that the lab reports are written by the student who's supposed to be writing them? How do you know that the student taking the exam, I mean, if they can, if they can you know, change a driver's license, trust me, they can do it with your ID. So how do you know? You know so we put in just as many good um, checks on the academic integrity side. In fact, we run everything through SafeAssign and we keep them for years, putting them into the same database. Um, our exams are all you know, proctored even on the online side. So, you know, we're doing, we do as well as we can to keep a rigorous course. In fact, some people have said the online classes are actually more rigorous. But the that's why the students learn more, though, because they're engaged in the material more. I never give the same essay topic, uh, let's say, I, I probably have to wait at least three years before I can use the same essay to topic over again, maybe even more than three years. Um, and that doesn't completely prevent it because students will hand in an essay that doesn't answer the question. And they think that you won't notice because I think they think faculty don't read them. Um, I, I don't use any of the tools like SafeAssign, which are provided to us. I don't use anything like that. I save all essays in folders, uh, you know, electronic folders, and I, uh, I change the reading. Not every single year, but let's say every other year, every third year, so that I can see from the references, if that's a book that I assigned four years ago, this is probably a plagiarized essay. I have very specific guidelines. And in fact, this is a change that I'm not happy about, but I have made it and I'm at peace with it. And it's that I have really strict guidelines. And if I see that they have been violated, that immediately is a plagiarism flag. So if you haven't used the reading, you haven't re you know, used the articles, you haven't used that book, you haven't used that resource, well, that basically means you probably bought this article from somewhere. I don't like that because I like freedom in learning, and so that's not something I am crazy about, but I, you, know, you have to do what you have to do. You tell a group of students, okay, I, I want all of you to read chapters you know, four, five, and six, um, and be ready next week. And then you go into the classroom, and you, know, you can tell right away who's read chapters three, four, and six, whatever it is. Uh, but when you do it online and then you require them to post, you know that they've read it now. Um, and you, know, you, you have to be very firm with them that you'll be reading them all. I think that's the, the uh, part that uh, is something I would stress to anyone doing this is that, you know, read it all. You know, just don't eh, give that a whatever, give this. You really need to, as the teacher, read through all of the responses and make sure that they're honestly been sent in as an independent person so that you could tell when it's been done as a group after a while. And I've had that, so then I will then chew them all out. So if this happens again, you're all failing. Uh, and it never happens again. So it's, uh, it's something that I think is uh, very important is, you know, that the students will only take it as serious as the teacher does.